So today I'm here to talk about PSP integrations, the good, the bad, and mostly the ugly parts. So to start with, a bit of a disclaimer, this is not going to be a technical talk. So it, it's not so much about the software development or the tools that we use. They will be mentioned, but not so much about that, but more about the kind of shenanigans that me and my team have to deal with almost weekly. So, however, I want to show you a bit how, how things work in the payments side. A bit of a background. How is the payment lifecycle for a credit card purchase? Everything starts with an authorization. That basically is the card way of saying, we will hold this money for a while so that later on we can actually charge on it. After that, there's the actual charge, which in the payments world is called the capture. This is a financial transaction that brings the money from the customer to the merchant, or in this case, Klarna. After that, there's a process that we we call the reconciliation. This is the PSP's way of saying, here's the confirmation that you got this money. The need for a confirmation, you'll later on understand why. Later on, the customer can, can do a chargeback. This is usually comes later, like a month later or something like that, or sometimes even earlier. But it comes because the customer is challenging the, the charge that was made on his card. So it could be for several reasons. It could be that because the customer never actually got the goods that he ordered, or it could say that it wasn't him who did the purchase due to card fraud or something like that. After that, Klarna has the, or a merchant has the capability of challenging that customer. In, it, in that case, the burden of proof comes to the merchant. So the merchant has to prove, no, we identified this person, this is who it, who it said he was, or no, we have the guarantee that the, merchant was the mer merchandise was delivered with, I don't know, UPS delivery receipt or something like that. The interesting part about this is that it can actually go back and forth several times. And the number of times actually varies with which PSP you're using or which card network you're using, if it's Amex or MasterCard or Visa. And there's different levels that you can go up to. And usually you want to avoid the last level, which is usually the card networks, because they have fees on it. So it can challenging up to the way the card network can easily cost 100 or $150, for example. And in any of this time, you can have a refund. So when we decided we need to return the money to the customer, we issue a refund. That also has a reconciliation to guarantee that the refund was actually sent. And it can even have a chargeback on a refund. So for several reasons, someone can actually say, no, I don't want this money back. Or it could be for other reasons that the account was closed or the person died. It it has happened. <laughs> so what is the PSP in there? The PSP is the third party that we, we, Klarna, have to connect with to do all these charges. They usually provide services because they uh, are, act as a, well, as a gatekeeper sometimes uh, of all integrations that we do. So for example, they, they hide that we are integrating with Visa and MasterCard and Amex and Discovery because they all have different processes. So how does it work in Klarna? Oh, this is, <laughs> sorry, it's going to be complicated from here. <laughs> I hope you guys can see. Um, so basically, imagine that someone is buying something, and in this case, it's the, it could be any client. We assume that it's Klarna checkout, but it could be my Klarna, for example. They basically, at some point, end up in an iframe that Payment Gateway serves, and the customer then fills in the card details and then sends the card details to Payment Gateway. Payment Gateway, being PCI compliant and stuff, can store the card, can do a lot of stuff internally, but eventually it ends up sending it to the PSP. After that, it goes all the way from PSP to the acquirer, from the acquirer to the car network, and then from the car network eventually reaches the bank. Only when it reaches the bank, we get the authorization that it was complete or not. If everything goes well, it goes all the way back 
to the customer. So you can see that there's a, a, a lot of intermediaries in this process. Later on, we get, and we, this is Lannister's, my team, <laughs> we get a reconciliation file. The reconciliation file is the thing that gives us all the transactions that happened. So it, it contains the reconciliations for the captures that we did. It contains the information for the chargebacks, all kind of financial transactions that involve money being moved around. We get them in those reconciliation files. So what is in those? One of the, oh, sorry. <laughs> so that part is the real time part where ha things happen online. And by real time, I mean a very loose way of real time because the response can take up to two minutes. To, that's basically the guarantee that they give, which it's interesting when there's someone else on the other side waiting, uh, well, most likely it failed. Not really. Uh, and then we get double charges and stuff like that. On the other side is the batch side where the, my team work with. So for us to know which transactions uh, are we seeing, we have to match whatever happens on the online side with the batch side. And for that, the PSPs and the acquirers use what they call a reconciliation ID. As an identifier, you would expect that, that it would be unique and it would uniquely identify a transaction, right? Turns out, for PSPs, <laughs> that's not true. So we actually get up to 20 collisions of IDs per day. Uh, but worse, sometimes they don't even actually send reconciliation ID. So on the real time side, this happened yesterday, by the way, out of coincidence, this happened yesterday. So they send us the transaction back. They say, oh, the transaction went through, but they don't send any reconciliation on this side. Usually they send it still here, but not here. So now we have a transaction that, well, if you want to, want, want to match it, figure it out. <laughs> Another thing that can happen is that, in this case, this was a successful case, but it could happen that the, the bank said, no, this, this transaction didn't go through. The customer could not have money or something like that. So it goes all the way back. And I must be honest here, I have no idea what happened in this communication here. I only know that the PSP answers saying, no, the transaction wasn't done. The problem is when later on we get that transaction that supposedly failed on the reconciliation file. So now we have a customer who explicitly said, no, your card purchase was denied, but you still get the money charged on your account. And this is the only way for you to know is on this side on the batch side. So we have worse cases in this, but <laughs> this is one. So no means no, but not really with PSPs. So the good thing about the reconciliation files is that we usually have a spec for those. I mean, it's, it's you're integrating with a third party, so you hope at least you have a spec. The problem with this is that each PSP that we integrate with, although they all follow somewhat the same process, each of them has their own way of doing stuff and doing with different kind of files. So we end up with things like this, which is a supposedly a, a fixed file format on one side, and then we have a bit of a wait, sorry, a bit of records on that side, and then some of them even say that they are CSV files. See the commas there? They're, they're CSV files for some definition of CSV files. Uh, Another problem with the reconciliations that we get is, for example, one of the specs that we got had 920 different combinations of possible states. But of course, there was no description of what possible combinations were those, what they meant, or anything like that. And sorry, you can imagine that asking, oh, by the way, what do all these mean in an email don't, won't get an answer. So. Um, Another example of what things we, the, the things I have to deal with is that one of our PSPs decided that numbers weren't exactly good enough. So they decided to encode them. <laughs> so if 
it ended in a nine, it became an I. If it ended, but if it was negative and it was a positive number, then it became a J. And they actually had the, like the table was here. I mean, so we went up to implement this, but we already heard about this merchant before, which I'll not name. <laughs> uh, and we actually implemented both ways. So we, we implemented the encoding version that we'd expect this weird format and the non-encoded version. When we got the first production file, guess what? They didn't follow this. They actually sent the numbers, but only in Europe. If you went to, to the US, it would be this. But when we checked, this was the Europe specification. <laughs> After that, we know, well, they said, oh, our files are CSV files, so it should be pretty easy for you to, to process them. Then when we got the specific, ah, sorry, the specification, we, we saw, why is this, why are all field numbers odd numbers? Why is it that they jump? Second of all, if it's a CSV file, why do you have a length? <laughs> like, why do you need that? Turns out the CSV file specification means that every even number was a semicolon. So for them, it was a fixed format, but every second field was a semicolon. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it is. On the RFC, the closest that we have as a CSV specification is the RFC 4180. And it also says that every line should be containing the same amount of fields. That's the definition of a CSV file. It's basically, it's a table with several records. And you're lucky if you have a title, rec a title uh, line. Of course, that's not how settlement files work. So in their case, usually what they do is that they have different kinds of records, each record with their field specification. Again, one, three, five, seven. <laughs> uh, and then we have to basically process these with a grammar. This is where Antelar help us because we, we can actually usually define an, a grammar that helps us uh, processing their files. So the Antelar is the tool that we use to create Gra uh, well, we define a grammar and it creates a parser for the files that they have. What we end up with is these things, where you have the semicolons between everything that you want to process. So another interesting thing that this specification had, had a very, it had a keyword that in the beginning we didn't exactly understand why. Can you figure it out? That one. <laughs> Turned out they were right. <laughs> they said that it the typical reconciliation file looked like that. They never defined what atypical was, but sure enough, like six months later, we found it in production. They were right. They're, we never got to know what atypical meant. They never had a definition. They never had a specification, but well, we had to adapt. It's their, it's their job. Uh, in the end, the thing that we know about reconciliation files and all that, you just can't trust them. So they're either plain wrong <laughs> or they're incomplete. And when we ask them, they say, yes, well, you are correct. I mean, they admit that the specification is incomplete. And they say, the code is not in our specification and this is being looked at. And this was the last thing I heard about that. We asked for new, sp new specs Months later, we got the exact same thing. Uh, so another kind of shenanigan that I wanted to show you was with the AutoEDO integration. You remember the pay with one click uh, project that we had at Karna? We, Lannisters, at that time it was Wall Street, were responsible for doing the mandates part of that. So basically for AutoEDO, you have two different kinds of files. One is the payments files, and another one is the mandates files. The mandates file is basically the authorizations that let you pull money from someone's account. And the payments file is the thing that actually charges stuff on the customer's account. And there's basically, for each kind of file, there's two different file responses. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but everything I spoke so far is files. That's how, how it works. Communication this way, it's only based on files. So you send a file, you get the file response. You send another file, you send a file response. So our team 
was responsible for the mandate side. So the good thing about this integration is that they actually had a test environment. We were so happy. They, we had an integration environment for us to test our stuff. So we sent the first time, we sent the mandates file, the ones where we were responsible for. The bad thing was they responded with a payment response file. So somehow they got the things, I don't know how, they just got the things mixed and they responded with a different kind of file that was not meant for this. The worst part of this was we got the response file in production. So we sent it to the test environment and they ended with the wrong kind of response in our production account. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting one that. What, when they, we asked about this, they said, this obviously needs to be corrected, but they had no idea when, and the only assurance that they could give us was, it's not gonna be resolved before you go live. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quote. <laughs> So we, we wing it. <laughs> so another shenanigan that we have is, I'll go for that one. It's an Icelandic com company that we deal with. So on 11th of March, this PSP uses a fixed file format. They started sending us 96 characters instead of 81, which was the spec. We never actually got to know what the 15 extra were, but they never told us. So we asked them, is there a new spec? I mean, it, it could have happened. They just changed stuff without telling us. So no, they said, no, no, the issue is being investigated as a matter of high priority. It took them six days to fix it. So this is how fast they could be in a high priority. And then, okay, we received the wrong files. Now we need, to, you, we need you to send us the same files again, but with the corrected version, because they never actually told us, uh, they could have just told us, how to interpret those 15 extra characters, but they didn't know either. So, uh, so we just asked them, can you resend us the file again since 11th of March? And they did. They sent it since 20th of February. So they decided to send us three weeks more worth of files than the ones we needed. And if it, if it hadn't solved the problem, then it would actually end up with duplicates. Because don't forget, this is the source of truth that we have. And then they also sent files that it didn't seem ours. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I still don't know who those files were. I asked around in all company, they didn't seem ours and I still don't know where they were. But someone most likely missed them. <laughs> so there's more than this though. So as I said, the chargebacks are part of a process that comes from a payment. So for every chargeback that you have, you should have a payment that it comes from. Because, I mean, you can't charge back just a, oh, give me some money. You have to have something that has been charged to you. As expected, or I would expect at least, if you have a chargeback, you should be able to identify which payment it came from. One of our PSPs does not have that capability. Amex. What happened is that they told us they could either we could go to the GUI and this, they said, well, we can start do web scraping. Or better yet, they could send us a fax with it. <laughs> the 90s called. They want their fax back. <laughs> Thing is, it's worse. There's worse than this. We have very recently integrated with a new kind of PSP. And in their case, we have, if a capture fails, for some reason, this is a process called clearing. In their case, what they send to us, it's a letter. There's nothing else that they can send. We asked, there is no virtual or no, there's no digital trail. It has to be by letter. I later on, on this day, figured out actually Klarna has a company that scans stuff for Klarna. The, their sole business is scanning stuff and sending it to us in virtual, in virtual documents. So that's how bad it is. Worse than this is Sometimes the communication between those four different parties breaks down. And it's, I mean, it's easy to understand why. I mean, there's banks involved, there's acquirers, car networks. Something has to fail sometimes. The worst part in this is that on our side, there's only one source of truth, which is the, the truth, which is the files. And we end up with things 
which is literally, here's some money for you. There's nothing else that we can tell you about this. There's a code for here's some money for you. Hadded some. What they do is that here's 10 pounds for you. Someone told us that we owe you 10 pounds, but we can't tell you where it came from. We don't know if it's a payment or if it's a chargeback or a representment. If you want to know, you can try to go to the GUI or call us. On the reconciliation file, it comes, here's some money. We owe it to you. <laughs> So basically, for every new integration that we have, we basically, okay, we ask for the specification, that's normal. We implement it, and then we ask for test files. This is a challenge sometimes. We are still waiting for test files for the latest integration we have. They somehow managed to fail to do it. Then when we get them, if we're lucky, we go back to implementing it again because the test files don't follow their own spec. Then we go, okay, let's go and try to test integrate. Nope, there's no integration testing because this is banks. They don't have integration testing, and when they do, they fail miserably at it. So we will go to production, and we wait for the first production file. When the first production file comes, we go back to implementing it again because it doesn't follow the spec, nor the test data files. Uh, <laughs> some time passes, and we go back to implementing it again because they changed it without ever telling us that they were going to change it. This happened twice already. Uh, <laughs> so I would like to give you a, a real life example of how this process works. This is one of our PSP's um, GUI that we have in the back office for, for the US. So we start, as I said, with an authorization. And this, uh, I mean, this was a $500 authorization. That was kind of a big one. Uh, the day after we decided, we captured this, in this merchant's terms, it's called a deposit. I don't know why. Uh, but it's, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, and on the same day that we did the charge, we decided to do a refund to that customer. So, you see, one, same thing. Everything is settled, right? Turns out, almost two months later, the customer decided to do a chargeback. So, effectively, the customer would have now got twice the amount they spent. So, they just got $500 for free. The interesting thing is that the bank knows about this. So the, the bank has all the information that we have. I mean, they're, they're the source of it. They could have just said, no, there, there's no point of doing a chargeback here because you already got the money back. They don't. So the PSP got the, the chargeback for us, and we have to answer this. So, of course, Klarna challenged this and said, oh, we, want, we already did the refund, so we want the representment. The only reason here was... We want the money because we already gave it to the customer. Turns out, we lost. We actually lost. <laughs> so we had to do, again, almost three months later from the beginning of, the, of that. So it's basically almost three months later. Something that was settled in two days took three months to finally conclude where we lost for I have no idea why something that should never even started to begin with and there's people spending time and money to solve all this so we end up with our faithful help which is the book of doom <laughs> we call them gently this has all the specification that we have to integrate it with, with. as you can see it's a bit thick um, and the reason why it's in paper is because it's easier to do annotations of all the stuff that is not on the spec and keep it in one place. So every time there's a, a problem, we can go to our faithful help. So, sorry. And with this, I finish my presentation. Do you have any questions for me?